Hey there guys and welcome back to Chemistry 3.6 on aqueous solution and solubility. In today's PowerPoint we're going to be talking about predicting precipitation which involves using a series of equations to work out whether a solid will be present in a solution. A new concept that we're going to be looking at today is from level 2 and it's the equation N equals CV and this equation relates the number of moles of an ion in a solution to the concentration of the ion in the solution and the volume of the ion in the solution. We're going to be needing this equation today particularly to work out concentrations. So I've just rearranged this equation to give us concentration and you'll see that it equals C equals N over V. I like to think of it as cats knocked over vases but each to their own. First thing we're going to be looking at in predicting precipitation is working out what equation we use to predict it. And we use something called the ionic product and you write that as IP. The ionic product is calculated in the exact same way as KS. So it's again products over reactants. But the difference is KS tells you how many of a pair of ions need to be present to cause a solution to be saturated. The ionic product is the exact same thing except it can be written for any solution regardless of whether that solution is unsaturated, saturated or supersaturated. Now I'll explain that concept a bit further now. So you can see for a solution of lead hydroxide KS equals PB2 plus times the concentration of OH minus squared. And you'll notice that IP is calculated in the exact same way. And because it's calculated in the exact same way, you might be thinking there must be a point where IP and KS are equal to each other. And there is. When IP equals KS, the solution is saturated. The best way to think of this is IP is the amount of two ions we are adding. That amount can be any amount. You could be adding one molecule of those ions, or you could be adding a thousand molecules of those ions. KS, on the other hand, is the concentration of that pair of ions that's required in order for the solution to be saturated. And so there are three main scenarios to learn. You need to learn when IP is less than KS, you need to learn when IP is equal to KS, and you need to learn when IP is greater than KS. If the amount of stuff we've put in is less than the amount needed to saturate a solution, then the solution is going to be unsaturated. And that means if we were to add even more solid, some of that solid would dissolve. When IP, the amount of stuff we're putting in, is equal to the amount of stuff we need to put in to saturate a solution, you're going to say the solution is saturated, or at equilibrium. And what this means is that the solution is completely full of that pair of ions. However, there is also no solid floating in the solution. So it's the exact right amount to saturate the solution, but no more than that, so no solid is present. On the other hand, if the amount of stuff you add is more than the amount needed to saturate the solution, it's what we call supersaturated. In this situation, a precipitate will form, because you've completely saturated the solution, and then on top of that, you've still got solid left over. And that solid can't dissolve because the solution is saturated, and so it just sits around and forms a precipitate. So let's put that into practice. If we've got lead hydroxide, PbOH2, with a Ks of 6 times 10 to the negative 16. You want to approach all these questions the same way that we've, we approached the questions in the last PowerPoint, with writing the equation out first, and then adding the information we know, and then answering the question. So I've written out the equation for PbOH2, turning into 1 lot of Pb2+, plus and 2 lots of OH-. minus. I've written the IP equation, products over reactants. And we can see the products here will be Pb2+, plus, and the product here will be OH-, minus, and on the bottom we'll have PbOH2. However, remember that you can never have solids in any solubility equations. So you get rid of the solid, leaving you with an IP expression Pb2+, plus times OH- minus squared. So now we've got an equation for our IP, and we know our Ks. So there's three situations that can occur. If the IP we calculate from this equation is less than the KS, 6 times 10 to the negative 16, then the amount of stuff in the solution is less than the amount needed to saturate the solution, and so the solution is unsaturated. If IP, the amount of stuff we put in the solution, is exactly equal to the amount that we need to saturate the solution, we call the solution saturated, meaning that there is no precipitate, however the solution is completely saturated, and no more solid will dissolve. If the IP we work out is greater than KS, or the amount of stuff we need for the solution to be saturated, that means we've completely saturated the solution and there's some solid left over. And the solid that's left over cannot dissolve, so it sits around and forms a precipitate. So let's do an example question to do with that. The KS for calcium carbonate is 5 times 10 to the negative 9. 
Will the precipitate form in a solution where the IP for calcium carbonate is 8 times 10 to the negative 11? So this is a nice easy question. We just need to look at the KS and the IP and work out which one is bigger. A lot of people mess up easy equations like this because they look at the 11 and they look at the 9 and say IP is bigger. However, this is not the case. You've got to remember that this is a negative 9 and this is a negative 11. So the negative 9 is the bigger number. So from that, we say that KS is greater than IP. And so the amount of stuff we've added is less than the amount of stuff we need to saturate the solution. And so if we were asked to say what type of solution this would be, it's an unsaturated solution and a precipitate will not form. So let's go to a slightly harder example question now. So in this situation, they're asking, will a precipitate of AgCl form when you add 75 mils of a certain concentration sodium chloride solution to 25 mils of a certain concentration silver nitrate solution? And they've given us the KS for AgCl. So in these situations, we need to work out IP and we need to compare IP to KS so we can sort it into being unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated. This may seem like quite a complicated question, but you'll be fine if you just apply the same three-step rule that we've been applying to all our other solubility questions. So write out the equation first. So the IP for AgCl equals the concentration of Ag plus times the concentration of Cl minus. So what information are we given? We're told the concentration of Ag plus is 4 times 10 to the negative 3, and the concentration of Cl minus is 6 times 10 to the negative 5 before mixing. And this before mixing part is very important because you're combining solutions and so the volume is changing. Previously, the volume of the NaCl solution was 75 milliliters and the volume of the AgNO3 solution was 25 milliliters. Now you've mixed them, the total volume is 100 mils. And if you remember this equation, C equals N over V, if volume is changing, it will change the concentrations of Ag plus and it will change the concentration of Cl minus. So this means we need to work out the new after mixing concentration of both Ag plus and Cl minus before we can work out IP. And so there are two methods you can use to do this. And I'll walk you through both and explain which one I prefer and why I prefer. So the first method is using C equals N over V. The key here is that the number of moles does not change even though the concentration and the volume does. For example, the number of moles of Cl- will be the same in NaCl before you've mixed it compared to when you do mix it. So all you need to do is work out the number of moles and then divide that number of moles by your new volume to give you your new concentration. So this is how you do that, is you get your old concentration of let's say Cl- and that equals N divided by your old volume. Remember, if you're using your old concentration, you need to be using your old volume. That's one of the most common mistakes of people who do it in this method. So we know the old concentration because we were told it. It's 4 times 10 to negative 3 equals N divided by the old volume, which we also know. Importantly, the volume needs to be changed from milliliters to liters. And you do that by adding a times 10 to the negative 3 to it. And so this gives us a number of moles. So in the solution, there was 0.0003 moles of Cl minus. And because there's nowhere else Cl can come from apart from, from the NaCl solution, there's still going to be the same number of moles of Cl before and after mixing, even if the concentration is changing. So what you do now is you work out the new concentration. So the new concentration of Cl equals the number of moles that we've worked out divided by the new volume. Again, the volume must be in litres, and you plug these numbers in, 0 0.0003 divided by 0 0.1 gives you a concentration of 0 0.003. This is definitely a different number to the 4 times 10 to negative 3 moles per litre of NaCl we had before. And this is why it's always important that you must calculate the new concentrations of both of the things that are making up the ionic product. Now method 1 is alright, but what I find is it's quite long-winded, and in addition to being long-winded, it has lots of opportunities to make mistakes. Because you're using V old and V new and new and old concentrations, the method I prefer is method 2. This is using the exact same concept, except I've created a one-step equation out of these two steps. So my equation is the new concentration will equal the old concentration times the old volume divided by the new volume. All you have to do is plug in the numbers. So we know the old concentration is 4 times 10 to the negative 3. We know the old volume of the solution is 75 mils. And we know the new volume of the solution is 100 mils. Now you'll notice that I haven't turned either of these to litres yet. 
Because they're both in milliliters, they cancel each other out, and so you actually don't need to worry about converting the volumes to liters if you're using method 2. You must always do it if you're doing method 1, however, or you'll get the wrong answer. So as you can see, the new concentration of Cl- is exactly the same either way I calculate it. So you have to decide at the end of the day whether you would like to do a longer method that requires you don't need to learn a new equation, or whether you'd like to do an easier and faster method, but it does mean you have to learn a new equation. Anyway, let's go back to the part of the question that we were at before. So we'd written out the IP equation, and we'd written out the volumes, and we'd realised that we can't just use the concentrations from the solutions because the solutions have been mixed together and that's changed the volume. And when you change the volume, you have to change the concentration. And so I've used method 2 to work this out because as I said, that's the method I use. So I've worked out that the concentration of Ag plus is equal to the old concentration, 6 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per litre, times the old volume divided by the new volume. And that's given me a concentration of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5. Equally, for Cl-, minus, I've gone the new concentration is equal to the old concentration times the old volume divided by the new volume to give me a concentration of 3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per litre. And now we have both concentrations we need to work out IP. Now we're at step 3, which is solve. IP equals the concentration of Ag plus times the concentration of Cl minus. It's equal to these two concentrations we just worked out, which equals 4.5 times 10 to the negative 8. Now what we have to do to work out whether precipitate will form is work out which is bigger, IP or Ks. So we've got IP at 4.5 times 10 to the negative 8, and Ks at 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10. What you can see here is that IP is greater than Ks, so the amount of stuff we've put in is more than enough to saturate the solution. IP is greater than Ks, and consequently, some solid will be left floating in the solution, and a precipitate will form. So here's another example question. Will a precipitate of AgCl form when 5 grams of NaCl is mixed with 100 ml of 6 times 10 to the negative 5 mole per litre silver nitrate solution? And again, they've given us the Ks, and they've also given us this time the molar mass of NaCl. Again, we need to calculate IP and compare it to Ks to work out whether a precipitate will form. So the same three steps as always, write out the equation, exactly the same as the last question, and we write out the information that we've been given. We've been given a mass of NaCl, a molar mass of NaCl, and a concentration of AgNO3. So in this situation, there's no change in volume, and when there's no change in volume, there's no change in concentration. So we don't need to worry about working out a new concentration of Ag+. But what we don't know is the concentration of NaCl. So we need to use a two-step equation here. First, we need to work out the number of moles of NaCl, and then using that number of moles, we need to work out the concentration of NaCl. So we can work out the concentration of Na. So let's solve that. So the number of moles of NaCl equals mass over molar mass, another equation you will have learnt in level 2 chemistry. It equals 5 divided by 58.5, giving you 0.085 moles. We then need to work out the concentration of NaCl. We know the concentration of NaCl is equal to knocked over vases, N over V. And so we put in our numbers and work out the concentration is 0.855 moles per litre. We know that NaCl splits up into Na plus and Cl minus, so it splits in a one-to-one -one ratio. It means the concentration of Cl minus is 0.855 moles per litre. We know that there's been no volume change, so the concentration of Ag plus will have not changed. Thus, we can work out IP. IP equals the concentration of Cl minus times the concentration of Ag plus, and we know that Ks equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10. We then need to work out which one is bigger, the amount of stuff we added, or the amount of stuff required for a solution to become saturated. And as we can see again, we've added more stuff than it takes to saturate a solution, and so IP is greater than Ks, and thus a precipitate will form. So that brings us to the end of the predicting precipitation PowerPoint. In the next session, we're going to start looking at acid-base chemistry and how that relates to equilibrium. I'll see you then.